Hi everyone and welcome back to my video series on getting started with your brother or your baby lock multi-needle machine. In this video we're going to be talking about tension and how to make sure your tension is properly adjusted to get beautiful stitch outs with your embroidery projects. So let's get started. Let's get started doing a tension test on our machine. The first thing we're going to need to do is hoop up some fabric. So I chose my five by seven hoop to do this. If your inner hoop is a little tight, just loosen the screw, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And then you need your fabric and your stabilizer. So right here, I have a no show mesh on the back because my first embroidery stitch out on my multi-needle is going to be a garment. So this garment does have a little bit of stretch to it. I am going to be using the no-show mesh and for my test on the front, I'm just using a cotton flannel. I did use basting spray, just a light coating to adhere these two layers together. And you can see that right here as I pull it back, there's a little bit of stick there, but it's really adhering nicely to this fabric. And that's what I want. I don't want to have shifting between the layers because that will contribute to puckering. If you are using basting spray, just make sure that whatever you're using, spray it over a garbage can or in a box. You do not want to spray this near your machine. So let's get ready to hoop this. I loosen the screw a little bit. Let's see if this goes in easy. You should not be fighting putting this in your hoop. So right here, now a little too tight. So I'll loosen that screw. this back down and then I'll press it in okay so once I get it in I'm just going to take my fingers and move it around just to make sure that no side is going to pop out all right just a little bit of that lip on the underside and then I'm going to tighten the screw so I just got to find that screw and tighten it. You can use a screwdriver. There is a little notch here. So if you need to tighten it with a screwdriver, by all means do so. And then what I like to do is then pop it out. I know this seems counterintuitive. Pop it out because I just pre-tensioned the hoop to how tight it should be. After I pop it out, I'll smooth it out again. And then this should go in very easily into my hoop. So all four fingers, press it down, pops in very nicely. And then again, just go around it. And we are ready to put this on the machine. Your hoop is now set up. Get out your A frame. You have an A frame and a B frame. And the letter is noted on the right side of your A frame. And this is the frame that you're going to use for the included hoops when you got your machine. So all of those hoops will work on here. There are other aftermarket hoops that you can use with this A-frame, but in this beginner series, we're going to be covering the original manufacturer hoops to get started. The screws back here, these are going to need to be loosened. They're gonna be very tight. You're going to wanna to get out the screwdriver that we talked about in your supplies and just loosen them up a little bit. The two screws to the right, these will need to be removed. So set these aside. These are going to be very important because we're going to need these when we install this A frame holder. This is the carriage on your machine and the embroidery frame holder A is going to be installed on this carriage. You have two pins on your machine. You have a pin here as well as a pin over here. And these two pins are going to be engaged with this embroidery frame holder A. When you slide your embroidery frame holder on, you're going to slide it right under the needles. And on your frame holder, these two holes right here are going to be very important. So you want to find that first hole because that first hole is going to go right over that pin. You cannot use the second hole. slide it on. I can feel that pin and see it coming up through the hole as well as this pin right over here is also in the hole. So now we have to tighten the screws on our embroidery frame holder to make sure everything is in place. I'm on the right side of the machine so I want to take this screw and here is my pin inside the hole of that frame holder and the hole to the right 
I'm going to take the screw and tighten it. Make sure you use your screwdriver to tighten the screw. The second small screw is going to be placed right next to the hole where you have the pin for your machine. So put that screw into the hole and tighten it. Only finger tighten these two screws right now because we have to use our frame holder to let the machine know what hoop we're using. It's very important every day to put a drop of oil on the hook in your bobbin area. It reminds you, wake up the screen, and then when you get to your main screen here, press this icon down here at the bottom. Choose the oil can and then press OK. This action will rotate the hook to the proper position. This tubular arm houses the bobbin and the bobbin case. This lid opens up and then you have a little picker right here that moves. The picker will come forward automatically and then you have a latch system. This latch system points to three o'clock. This angle will allow you to see the latch system a little bit better. This latch comes out to the left you want to hold onto the latch and pull out your bobbin case. And I will show you how the hook rotates when you choose that oil can. I'm pressing the oil container icon and the hook will rotate to the optimal position. The area in which you're going to oil is right over here. It looks like a window. So I will zoom in on that area and show you exactly where to put your drop of oil. It will also show you on your bobbin cover where to oil on that right hand side and exactly where it's located. Once the hook is rotated, this is the area right here, right in this groove. It almost looks like a little opening and you're gonna put a drop of oil right in there. Just one drop, do not over oil your machine. Grab your oil container, cut off the tip for a very small hole and put one drop of oil right in here. I already oiled mine, so I'm not going to squeeze it. And also you might want to invest in one of those oil pens because I think you're going to get much better control if you accidentally slice too big of a hole. But if you have any extra oil, please make sure you wipe it up in this area and as well as the bottom of the cover. In your supplies, you have Filtec bobbins. So I want you to get out a bobbin, find the tail, and leave about six inches coming off that bobbin. Your thread needs to come off the right hand side. So it's coming up and over the top. So it looks like the letter Q. I'll hold this into place. And then I'm going to grab my bobbin. With this bobbin, you are looking for the groove. So when I rotate this, I see the groove right here and you want to insert your bobbin into the bobbin case, holding that tail, and then rotate that tail back till you find the groove. The thread slides in that groove, bring it along, and then you want to pull it back so it snaps in to that area right here, and that's your tension spring. You will hear a click, you will feel the click, but if the thread is not in the tension spring, your bobbin thread is going to be coming to the top of your embroidery designs, and you're going to be seeing bobbin thread, and that's not what you want. So put it through the groove, put it to the left, pull it back and to the right, and you will hear that click, and then you're good to go. Once your bobbin is inserted into the bobbin case, you want to pull the latch back to three o'clock. Once you pull that latch back, your bobbin will not accidentally fall out. Put it under the picker, angle it up, put it in about halfway, let go of the latch, and then push it in. You should hear that click of it snapping into place. If you don't hear it, take it out and reinsert it until you hear that snap. Let's proceed to setting up our machine for a tension test stitch out. Take your five by seven hoop that is prepared and ready to install on the machine and we're going to insert it into the frame holder. Now your hoop, it doesn't matter which way you do it. You can put it in this way, 
I could turn it around and I could put it in this way. So the machine is not fussy on which way the hoop will go on. However, if you can see right here, I'll try to put the hoop over here in the frame holder clip, but it doesn't fit on this side. So we're going to have to adjust the screws in the back. So let's position them at the five by seven hoop size. The frames that come with your machine are the eight by 14, the five by seven, the four by four, and the one and a half by two and a half. The machine knows which size hoop you're using. So this one right here is the eight by 14. When you move this down, you can feel your pin going into certain notches. And the notch that I'm going to want to use is the third one down because that is set up for my five by seven. I can feel that it just dropped in there. Then you want to tighten both of those screws, not just finger tighten them. You definitely want to use your screwdriver because if you don't, you may get an error on your screen that says you, you don't have the right size hoop in or you have to switch to a larger hoop. So this is how the machine knows what hoop is on the machine. Pick up your five by seven frame and you want to look for these clips on each side of the frame holder. So there's one right here and one right here. Your hoop is going to be placed, tuck the fabric in so it's not hitting and catching on the needles. And you wanna put your frame under those pins. There's a pin here and the pin here. Angle it up slightly, slide it in on both sides. And you wanna make sure the frame holder locks in with a pin sticking up on the left and a pin sticking up on the right so it cannot be removed. To remove your frame once you are finished embroidering, you're going to press down on the thumb pads. You have a thumb pad on each side, so you press down and then press up on the frame and it will slide right off. Turn your machine on and run through the prompts. Tap it to wake it up if it's already on. Press OK. The machine frame is going to calibrate and I'm going to choose on my machine this icon right here. If you have a brother, it may be slightly different as far as which folder you need to choose to get this design right here. This is your tension test design. Press it. Press it again. And then press set. And it brings up your tension test on your machine. What I want you to do is take your finger and move it up so it's at the top. And this will allow us to do a tension test here if necessary and a third tension test if we feel that it needs to be done. Once your tension test design is on your screen, you wanna press edit end, press embroidery, and your machine should all be threaded. So we'll press lock and then press your start stop to begin. When the embroidery design is finished, it will let you know it's finished embroidering on your screen. Press OK, and now we can remove it from the embroidery arm. As mentioned before, press on your thumb pads, lift up with your fingers, and take it out. And here is our finished test embroidery. Let's check it out. Here is my finished stitch out, and you may notice that I have two stitch outs on here. Well, what happened? The first stitch out I did went fine, but then all of a sudden on needle number three, I kept getting some jam ups. So I had to re-thread my needle number three from scratch, making sure that the thread was in the tension guides, because if there's no tension, what will happen is the bobbin thread will pull the needle thread to that underside and you will get a jam up of your threads. So always go back, re-thread from scratch, and if the jam up was particularly nasty, change the needle too because you don't want to end up with a bent needle. So looking at my two stitch outs here, my second and my third, both look great. I did my first one and then I remembered what I always tend to forget. 
This little lever right here, I forgot to push it shut. So I did a second stitch out to see if it made any difference. Now, Looking on the back side, this is how you check your tensions. What you should be seeing is one thirds white to two thirds of the colors of the needle threads. And these look about the same. So when you see uniform results across all 10 threads, that's telling you one thing. That's telling you to adjust the bobbin tension. If you had several of these lines that were good and maybe one or two that were off, then I would say adjust your needle tension. But this tells me, because I'm barely seeing a third, that I'm going to tighten my bobbin tension because that will pull more of the needle thread to that underside. Again, I'm going to tighten my bobbin tension so I can see more of the colored needle thread. And then I will do my final test right here to see how it turns out. Here is my final tension test. And after I adjusted my bobbin case to tighten the bobbin tension, this is the stitch out I just did. So let's turn it over. And now you can see that just by tightening the bobbin tension on my final stitch out, I'm seeing more of that colored needle thread to the white bobbin thread. So I am indeed seeing two thirds of the colored needle thread to one third of the bobbin thread. And that is what I want. I think all of them look pretty good. This one right here, I'm seeing a little less than what I would like and maybe these two over here. So what I could do is if I wasn't seeing as thick of the needle thread as I would want, I would loosen the needle tension to smidge, maybe just a quarter turn to just try to get more of that colored needle thread because the rest are very good. Let's talk about bobbin tension because it is crucial on your multi-needle machine. You should make sure that your bobbin tension is correct before you ever go and adjust your upper tensions. When I brought my machine home, because I have used a multi-needle before, I simply did the pull test, pulling my thread out of the bobbin, and I determined that just by feel, my bobbin tension is pretty close to where it should be. I still have to do a test though. However, if you are a new embroidery machine owner and have never had a multi-needle before, I would recommend using the bobbin weight and I will show how to use that at the end of this video so that you can assess if your bobbin tension is correct. These are the four items you're going to need to test the bobbin tension. A full bobbin, your flathead screwdriver, the small one from your supplies, your bobbin case from your machine, as well as the weight that came with your supplies. The two things you're gonna need are your bobbin case as well as your pre-wound bobbin. So this is a Coates L and the thread is going to come off your bobbin case like the letter Q. So it's coming off the bobbin on the right hand side. I'll take my bobbin, put it into the bobbin case and then I'm going to look for the groove. So I can see the groove right there. Notice that my thumb is placed on that bobbin, giving it some tension, but so that I can also pull out some of the thread. So it still rotates, but it's a little bit stiff in that bobbin case. I'll put it through that groove around. You heard that click. And then I pull it back and it's good. But we still have to test the bobbin tension. The next thing you're going to want to do is take off the excess that's coming out of your bobbin and I have the scissors over here. So I'm going to trim this to about, I don't know, six, seven inches and get rid of the excess. Then I'm going to take this tail that's coming out of the bobbin case and I'm going to get the bobbin tension donut right here and put this right into the hole. Sometimes it's a little fiddly because bobbin thread is very, very thin. And then once you get it through, you're going to want to knot that. All right, so I'm just going to take this over here, make a knot around this. And you could do whatever knot you want. I'm not real fancy here. 
Okay, so it should look like this. The tail is attached to the donut, and now we need a wall to test the tension. So now I'm back at the wall, and what you want to do is hold your bobbin case against a flat surface because you want to see how this is coming down. See how it's starting to crawl like a spider? That's how your bobbin tension should be. Oh, looks like my bobbin tension is still perfect. And I'm really liking that. So slow crawl like a spider of that weight. So my bobbin tension is perfect. Now the question is, what if your bobbin tension is too tight or too loose? In your supplies, you're going to get a screwdriver and you have that large screw right there. So if you need to loosen or tighten the tension, always remember lefty loosey, righty tighty. Take the screwdriver that came with your supplies and rotate that maybe a little tweak going to the left will loosen your bobbin tension. A little tweak to the right will increase your bobbin tension. A little turning goes a long way. So don't, I have found personally that if I turn it a quarter turn, that is usually too much. And you want to make sure that you test your bobbin tension on a regular basis, but mine is perfect and I'm ready to insert this into the machine.